वेलकम फ्रेंड्स सो इन अवर लास्ट सेशन वी डिस्कस्ड वेरियस स्ट्रेटेजीज विच वी कैन एडॉप्ट फॉर टेक्नोलॉजी मैनेजमेंट नो वी सो दैट देर आर लीडर्स इन द टेक्नोलॉजी इनोवेशन एंड देन देर आर फॉलोअर्स एंड देन देर आर पीपल हु डेवलप एप्लीकेशन अराउंड दैट टेक्नोलॉजी and then there are people who not only use it for the commercial purpose but also try to exploit the innovation or technology of other people by taking the license by going for the technology transfer or by following some other rule to exploit those innovations in their local markets so that is all up to us that what type of technology strategy we want to adopt but if you recall our very first or second session of this course we discussed one particular issue related to idea management system and in that idea management system we discussed that we need to see the wave see the wave was one important area of innovation that is one important way to get ideas that is one important way to get entries into your challenge book we discussed about challenge book if you recall and i requested all of you to make challenge books now i expect that by this time you must have sufficient entries in your challenge book and i request that you divide the entries in your challenge book if you have this challenge book or simply the diary if you are maintaining in that diary you classify your ideas whatever entries you are making into three categories this we discussed in that session but just a quick recap of that there are ideas which are coming because of pain because of problems you see problems around you and those problems are important source of entries into your challenge book then another important source of entries into your challenge book is the wave you observe some patterns you observe certain trends and those trends those futuristic thing that you feel that this thing will happen after one year this thing will happen after two years this thing will happen after four years so how you become capable how you develop your competency to exploit the benefit of those trends that is the wave and third is you see the waste there are different types of waste around us waste of human resource waste of energy waste of natural resources so how to optimally use all those things that is another important source of entries in your diary in your challenge book so in this particular session we are going to discuss this particular issue that is wave and in wave also we are particularly going to discuss the wave related to technology you may have different types of waves you may have waves related to regulatory systems you may have waves related to demography you may have waves related to other socio economic aspects political aspects consumer behavior aspects but in this session we will limit ourselves to wave related to technology and as startups as entrepreneurs as future entrepreneurs potential entrepreneurs we need to see that how to exploit the technology wave how to 
see how to visualize that what type of technology will be there. And then in our last session we have already discussed about the various strategies related to technology innovation management. So, how we will adjust ourselves, how we will develop the competence with respect to those future technologies. Just to give you an example that why this technology forecasting for entrepreneurs is important. Like if I know that after one or two years there will be more and more use of electric vehicles, there will be more and more use of solar energy even in my day to day household activities because there is lot of research which is going on in area of solar energy. So, I understand or I forecast that we will have much better solutions for solar energy in near future. Maybe we may have materials building materials where they are directly <coughs> giving you the benefit of solar energy. You need not to install a separate solar panel for that purpose. Your wall of the building can act as solar panel itself. So, these things are quite possible. Now, if I am a thermal power company and uh, in India we all know that the contribution of thermal power is very high in our overall energy requirement. So, obviously, my contribution is going to decrease and the contribution of renewable energy in the fulfillment of the requirement will going to increase. And in that case what will happen to my heavy investments in plants, machineries in developing those big thermal power plants. Obviously, my plant load factor will going to decrease and you can check the data of companies like NTPC in India where plant load factor used to be more than 90 percent and now it is continuously decreasing and it is touching somewhere around 60 percent at the present time. So, it becomes a matter of deep concern for such companies which are technology intensive companies because of shift in technology and if you are not keeping pace with that shift in technology you will be in trouble. Therefore, technology forecasting becomes very important for all those who are in technology savvy companies, who are in technology oriented company and this session will discuss some of the techniques popular methods for doing technology forecasting. So, let us see what are the important methods of technology forecasting. So, now if I talk of this concept of technology forecasting, this concept is very old. The concept of technology forecasting which is also known as future studies, this concept is also known as future studies and in this future study concept because in literature you will find this future study word also interchangeably used for technology forecasting. So, concept is very very old as I mentioned that it is more than 100 years old and uh, the word future research became popular around second world war and uh, there were people who started thinking that uh, a lot of development took place with uh, various technology during the world wars and particularly in the second world war. So, after the war people started extrapolating that these technologies can be applied in the business organizations as well. So, the concept became more popular after the second world war and uh, in this technology forecasting 
it is slightly different than the normal forecasting the demand forecasting which we are used to. If we go to our economics class, if we go to our operations management class, we are used to have demand forecasting and demand forecasting we do for one year, two year period, one month, two month, three months, six months, ten months period or even weeks also. But here the scope is much larger it is from 3 to 25 years or even more. So, the scope of technology forecasting with respect to time horizon is really very very huge and uh, the demand forecasting where you have some kind of historical data and you just extrapolate that historical data and the assumption in that is all other factors are remaining constant as it is. So, therefore, you only extrapolate the previous data historical data to get the future demand, but in case of uh, technology forecasting we are not depending on the historical data like that rather we consider technological environment, social environment, political environment, economic environment. So, it is much multidisciplinary approach which we follow in technology forecasting. So, you have socio economy, technology, political inputs uh, while we do the technological forecasting. And uh, since it is not depending on one single factor, so that type of extrapolation which we do in demand forecasting may not be applicable for technology forecasting. And therefore, we need to apply some kind of creativity, it requires some creativity for technology forecasting, it is not a mathematical activity, it is mathematics and some creativity, some qualitative factors. So, it is a combination of uh, uh, both the approaches where you use quantitative as well as uh, your creative inputs for getting the forecast related to technology. In the process of technology forecasting, we also have one term which is uh, close to technology forecasting that is technology monitoring. In our one of the previous sessions, we discussed 8 stages of technology innovation management given by Bright and uh, in Bright's literature, we also find the mention of this term technology monitoring, where it is mentioned that you need to monitor signals of technological change, that some signals you need to as we mentioned in our very first class that innovation starts with curiosity. So, you need to keep your ears eyes open, so that you can observe those signals, the environment gives you signal. But sometime we keep our eyes and ears closed, so we are not able to sense those signals and uh, we need to see what type of changes are happening. If the whole world is moving into the direction of green energy, if whole world is committing towards reduction in carbon emission. So, when we are seeing that the world is trying to reduce the carbon emission. So, we cannot think of a factory, we cannot think of a new enterprise which is using fossil fuel. At this time, if I install a new factory based on fossil fuel, it is like complete ignorance. I am not living in the present world, I do not know what is happening around me. So, I need to see the I need to be very very careful about the technological changes and that is what technological monitoring all about. And uh, what are the sources for that purpose? How do I know what are the new signals coming? I need to have some sources only then nobody is going to come to me that Mr. X these types of changes are going to happen. I need to go to different places to monitor those signals and 
the best way the best way to monitor those signals is to go through various journals and magazines journals and magazines are giving you the possibilities of future the papers presented or papers authored by good academicians these papers give you signals about the future technologies so you need to have a collection of you need to have a database of uh, some of the selected journals of your field magazines of your field for an example if uh, i am into one north american company uh, country so if a paper or if an article is first published in a popular science magazine known as new scientist and then it is pu published in scientific american and if i can have a track of that if i can monitor this thing that this paper or this type of technology is published earlier in new scientist and now it is published in scientific american so i have this kind of sense that yes this is a future technology so we need to continuously update we need to continuously uh, read we need to read more and more to keep our, ourselves uh, updated with the latest signals which are in the market so that is technology monitoring now let us talk some of the specific forecasting tools which are there with respect to uh, technology forecasting we have already discussed about the s curve in our previous sessions and uh, with respect to s curve we have this pearl function which can help us to some extent the on this x axis we have time and on this y axis we have performance index and now with the help of this pearl function you have this y which is the dependent variable and uh, we need to forecast the growth of this dependent variable and this dependent variable is obviously the performance index and uh, uh, we are using a generic word performance index but performance index can be anything performance index can be the uh, efficiency of uh, your uh, lighting equipment that can be one performance index and uh, that is the dependent variable l is the upper limit of growth like this is l which we expect that uh, this technology will go to that level so selecting an appropriate l value is also very very critical for forecasting using this pearl function that what is the expected level of uh, this because this pearl function is giving the value between y and t because t is the time at what time what will be the performance index and a and b are the parameters which you come to know with historical data and uh, by doing the logistics arrangement if you go the uh, logarithmic uh, of uh, function of this pearl function then it becomes a simple linear function also but uh, if you see so you need you can calculate the value of y at a particular time t so like uh, for a particular uh, product or uh, category of product you know the present value in 2017 what is the value of this performance index and when you know the values of a and b with the help of your historical data and if you substitute in place of 2017 2025 then you can correspondingly calculate that what will be the performance index by 2025 so that is the simple way of uh, calculating the performance index over a period of time that is but the success of this pearl function depends on carefully selecting the value of 
upper limit of this performance index that is L. So, this is the L. Similarly, there is one more function which is uh, given by Gompertz. This is also based on the S curve and in this also if you see you have y which is the dependent variable l that is the upper limit as we discussed in the previous function Perl function and uh, in this case again you need to determine only two dependent uh, 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 two variable that is b and k and this also gives you value with respect to t. So, this is another function where uh, you if have values of uh, past performance at different times with the help of those past performance at different times you can evaluate the value of b and k and then with the help of the value of b and k you can determine the value of y for any future time. So, these are two methods one is Perl function another is Gompertz function which can help us in determining the performance index at a particular given time. Then we have another technology another method for determining the future technology or the status of future technology that is the envelope curve and trend extrapolation. Now the envelope curve is generated by successive technologies. This is also based on the concept of S curve. Now, as we discuss that S curve is like this and after some time your present technology starts maturing and then it will decline. So, what we do? We keep on introducing new technologies successively and these type of curves keep coming and uh, as we discussed in one of the previous session that the successive technologies are superior technologies. So, what we can do you see that you can have a straight line which is like this and this is the envelope curve this straight line is the envelope curve. So, where you have uh, different types of uh, S curves and their peaks from where they are started moving to maturity side. If you see that from where they are started moving the maturity side the that particular point if you are joining for different S curves that gives you the envelope curve. And, uh, then if you extrapolate this envelope curve you will know what will be the performance index for a new technology at a given particular time. So, this becomes a kind of regression line and uh, if you extend this regression line then you will come to know that what will be the performance index of this particular technology or this set of technology or because these different S curves represent these different S curves represent micro radical innovations these represents the generational improvements. So, if I go with very good trend analysis trend extrapolation we will come to know that uh, what will be the performance index of this technology at a particular time. Then there are uh, certain equations which uh, are given by some of the scientists for different types of uh, important technologies. Like uh, we discussed uh, in our earlier discussion about the Perl function which is given by this. Now, people have given specific functions for specific technologies like for efficiency of light source after 1850 you have this type of equation where these you can say minus 128.71511 and 0 0.06851 these are considered to be values of a and b. 
So, if I say simply it is y equals to a plus b t. So, where t is the time. So, time you are calculating from 1850. So, if I am today in 2017. So, it is 100, 167 years and uh, the value of t is 167 here and a and b are here. So, I can calculate that what should be the efficiency of light source in 2017 and if I want to calculate it in 2050 then the value of t is equals to 200. So, in 2050 what should be the efficiency of light source I can determine that and uh, why it is important because if I am doing some innovation and if I am not able to reach a figure closer to this value which I will get by putting 200 here in 2050. So, I should check my innovation, I should check my technology that where is the flaw, why I am not reaching that level of forecasting which is expected at that time. Similarly, the equation for top speed of combat aircraft since 1909 is given by this equation y equals to minus 118.30568 plus 0 0.0640 t. So, this is for the military aircrafts, uh, bombing aircrafts, uh, this type of uh, uh, equation was suggested and uh, you will see that uh, lot of uh, development in real life has taken place based on these forecasting equations. So, you can have this type of equation for a particular product, uh, but it requires huge amount of data and only on the basis of that huge data you can develop this type of uh, equations. As we discussed in the beginning of this session that it is very difficult for us to exactly quantify the technology forecasting. So, qualitative methods are equally important in technology forecasting and one of the important qualitative method which we can use and which is very popular and very simple also that is Delphi method. In Delphi method what we do we invite some experts. 4, 5, 6, 7 experts we invite and these experts are the subject area experts, experts of that technology and there is one moderator of that group and the moderator gives some very specific questions to those experts. These experts give their opinion on the basis of questions asked to them opinion means they give their forecast. Then the moderator of the group combines the information provided by each expert and then ask again those experts to revise their original estimate in light of assumptions made by other experts of the group. So, they revise their original estimate and this process these rounds are repeated 3 or 4 times. Therefore, Delphi method is an iterative approach. Iterative means each iteration means each round, iteration is equal to round here. How many rounds moderator take to reach a consensus value, where all members of the group, all experts of the group, they agree almost on one particular value they converge on a single phenomena, single uh, value that is the final of Delphi method. So, Delphi method is a very popular method of uh, doing the forecasting because it requires long term assessment and uh, long term assessment may not be possible because all our earlier methods where we discussed equations and uh, extrapolation in that uh, we are not able to take care of uh, various different types of factors. Here in Delphi because of the qualitative nature it is easy to take care of uh, not only technological factor, but other socio economic factors also. 
So, therefore, Delphi is a very popular method of technology forecasting. Then another pos possible method of technology forecasting is morphological analysis. It is also very popular morphological analysis. And now what we do in morphological analysis? We perform a systematic exhaustive categorization and evaluation of the possible alternatives, <coughs> alternative combinations of sub capabilities which may be integrated to provide a given functional capability. So, each functional capability is divided into various sub capabilities and for various sub capabilities we find that what are the possible technological alternatives and then you can have different combinations of those alternatives for sub capabilities. So, that uh, there will be large number of combinations there will be large number of combinations for our final solution for final output. So, to have the understanding of this morphological analysis let us do one example and this is a very popular example you will find this example in various books also that is the building bricks example. Now, in this building bricks example the brick which we use for the construction purpose. Now, the capability of a brick we have divided into 5 different headings and these are material, the forming process, the bounding process, the properties and the shape form of the brick. Now, let us see what are the alternatives for these sub capabilities. If you see that this is sub capability A, this is sub capability B, this is sub capability C, this is D and this is E. Now, material can be natural clay, it can be metal, it can be plastic or it can be waste materials. The forming process can be extrusion, it can be molding or it can be pressing. The bounding process can be through heating, the chemical bonding can also be done or molecular bonding can also be done. Properties are related to opacity, thermal insulation, elasticity and aesthetics. These are the different types of properties which are possible and the shape we need to we can have rectangular, spherical, interlocking, cubical and aesthetics. All these are the different types of alternatives with respect to different sub capabilities. Now, our normal household brick, the normal household brick which we use. So, if we see the normal household brick, household brick. So, the combination which we are using material is natural clay A 1, the forming process is molding B 2, the bounding process is through heating C 1, then the property is it is thermally insulated or elasticity or aesthetics. Let us say it is uh, thermally insulated not thermally insulated it is uh, aesthetics. So, property is D 4 and form is rectangular E 1. So, this becomes my household brick combination. If I go for a furnace, so it again can be the same but in case of D 4, it will be D 2. In case of a furnace, I want to use bricks to develop a furnace. So, the alternative in D will not be D 4, rather it will be D 2. So, you can think of that how many different combinations we can have. You have 4 alternatives here, you have 3 alternatives here you have 3 alternatives here, you have 4 alternatives here and you have 5 alternatives for E. So, these many alternatives are there 4 into 3 into 3 into 4 into 5. Out of these many alternatives, 
we have only tried two or three alternatives so far and there are possibilities that you can try many more alternatives. It is possible that we may move from natural clay to waste materials over a period of time. So, even in our household bricks, so in some cases it is happening you are using fly ash for developing the bricks. So, that is moving from A 1 to A 4. So, that type of combinations are possible. So, morphological analysis which we have taken from the field of biology, but it is very much useful in technology forecasting also. So, with this we come to end of this session and we saw the use of technology forecasting, some of the techniques of technology forecasting and the important thing is that we need to understand that technology forecasting is much complex activity than the demand forecasting. It is multidisciplinary, it involves not only technological inputs, but it also involves socio-economic inputs and therefore, techniques like Delphi or morphological analysis are more suitable than purely quantitative techniques of technology forecasting. Thank you very much.